Hey, Stubers. Hey, Facebookers. Party people alike. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this is the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing to my page, clicking the notifications, sending me your nice comments, giving me the thumbs up, liking my videos, sharing my videos, all that jazz. And at the very least, just turn the volume down on your computer or your cell phone, whatever you're watching this on, and let my videos play through. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do what it What we're going to do for you today is we're going to show you how to reset the timing chain tensioners on a 4.4 Land Rover. I believe this goes in a Jaguar and some BMWs. You're going to need this kit off the Ebays. Uh, it was about 53, 54 bucks. Um, it is really helpful and without it, we couldn't have done this. So we've got one tensioner right here. Jeff is Jeff has just got this tensioner set. And just to describe to you how we did it, go ahead, Jeff, tell them how you did that thing. Um, there's a tiny little pin. And I'll pull it out right here. Sorry, it wasn't real this ready. One real, real small. Down in here, there's a hole. And below that is a little, even smaller hole. And you shove that pin down in there and it releases it and you just it's tight and you squeeze it and you put your grenade pin in so that it catches right there and that'll hold it in place yep so there's one and okay so on this one we stuck the pin in there through there like this and you can see that then we we're able to push this one down hope you guys dig that because that's cool stuff believe it or not we sat here and looked at these for like 30 minutes before we figured that out Okay, in our kit right here, we have a pen right here that we put up inside where the crank position goes. And why did we put that up in there, Jeff? There is one spot on the on the uh, reluctor ring that is a little bit bigger and is a different shape than the other ring, um, holes in the ring. And that tool slides right up in there and locks the ring in place to hold your crank at top dead center for number one. Okay, so I wanna be clear on what this does and I can show you on my old motor here. On the reluctor ring, there is only one spot that this tool fits in and it fits in there and it locks the crank into position. So you know that these little gnarls go inside that oblonged window right there on the back side up the flywheel. Okay, so if the engine's set in the right position, your keyway should end up being here on the bottom at six o'clock. Look at this, multitasking, holding the camera, setting the cams. When you get the one set, take this one out of my hand fingers. Now we're gonna put the bolts in for the tensioner and tighten them things up. Going exactly by torque specifications, these are supposed to be tightened down to nine foot-pounds, according to my book. Now, when we run out of engine assembly lube, we very commonly use Lucas oil additive as an engine assembly lube. Good. And we always engine assembly lube anything we put together. Okay, so we're gonna reset this tensioner. Just gonna put your thumb on that, hold that in the up position kind of let it ah. we did it right the first time when I wasn't recording there so it may look like that okay so now we're gonna stick the bar in there against the flat parts of the cams and we had to turn it a little bit clockwise to get the bar to fit down on there flat and to be sitting on the cam notches where it's supposed to be sitting. Now this side is all done and all set. So now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna do the other head for you. It's pretty much the same work as the driver's side head was. Okay, so if you guys are like us and you took your cams out, we're using 96 inch pounds on the torque for the cams themselves. Okay, now we took a screwdriver and we pried up on this because there's a locking tab on the inside. Very gently. And just very gently pried it up just to take the tension out of there so at startup we didn't have any wonky cam gear noise and had to wait for the oil to push that up there. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert our first guide onto the pass driver side head. If you notice the stud sticking out at the bottom of the chain guide, it is in the incorrect position. We found this out later. There's no 
real orientation. You just feed it up there, the bottom side, get it around there. Now this bottom side needs to be tight. Need to make sure all the tension and all the slack is over on this side. This side should be extremely tight. You should not be able to move up on the chain here at the bottom, yep. just like so Jeff's got it. When he pulls on it, it should take that tensioner out of there. Now he's gonna slide the yeah. other tensioner in there, moved off a tooth. Kinda of gotta yeah. hold it on the gear there when you're doing it. And then he's gonna slide on the other tensioner, guide. Where Jeff's right arm is, and he's screwing in the gold screw, it should be the black screw with the stud sticking off up at the top of the screen. Now it's sitting right. So I show you this keyway underneath here. It is pointed directly at six o'clock. That's very important. If you don't have the holder in the back of the crank on the flywheel, you have to make sure that that's at six o'clock. Now that pin that's in the center of this tensioner, if you pull that, a bomb is gonna go off. So don't pull that thing. Now them get tightened down with nine foot pounds of torque, if you're getting that technical about things, but we can pretty much do nine foot pounds of torque with a ratchet. I will point out one thing. This timing that we're using is the original timing for this vehicle. Um, it was in extremely good condition, and that's why we didn't purchase brand new timing kit. Because anything that we bought off the interwebs would have probably been worse than what we already got. Okay, to reiterate, we have our cam locked down on the flat spots with this bar right here. We're gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna pull up on this and I'll show you that just to set the pressure on them cams and that chain. Okay, I'm just thinking for the future here when you go to put your timing cover on. Now, these gaskets for the oil pans are made out of Permatex, so we're gonna take a razor and clean that off, but we're gonna put extra Permatex right there to make sure we don't have any leaks across this seal here on the bottom. Prior to installing any of the timing components, if we're using old timing components, we're going to clean them very well with brake cleaner. Make sure we try to blow them out and blow out any old oil or contamination from our old engine that had a bad connecting rod and metal shavings inside the oil. Make sure that you, after you get the chains on, put a douse them with motor oil or some like Lucas just to prelude the chains because for the first couple seconds when you first start it up there will be no oil on these chains so you want to get some oil on them make sure prevent flashing in hot spots and stuff like that more than likely it wouldn't start it wouldn't happen at initial startup but He's talking about himself. He didn't even realize that I'm giving him the finger. Now we're ready to put the cover on. Roll the motor over my head. Yeah, roll the motor over first, then put the cover on. 
Roll the motor over <laughs> without the locking tabs on the engine. Now, if you still have your locator pin in the rear of your crank sensor, make sure you pull that out. We're gonna roll the motor over, make sure we end up at top dead center with all of our stuff. See how it spins. Now we can't go back and refilm this, but we have this bolt in the wrong location. It is actually supposed to be up in here. Okay, now make sure your post is up here. We actually have that wrong. And then we can fit our phaser actuator in there properly. Shorter bolt goes in the bottom, longer bolt goes on the top. And your little nut goes right there. Perfecto. That's a medium length one, you know, three different lengths. Medium length one down there at the yep. bottom. No, long one in the bottom. Long one at the bottom, yep. meet short one, one in the middle, middle and long one on top. Medium one on top. Dishes are done, dude. Now we gotta put the cam cover back on and make sure you pull out your crank sensor plug. If you have it back there holding your crank in there and Permatex your front cover, put it back together, reassemble, and you got new timing on your 4.4. Hey, I hope you guys aren't disappointed that I didn't disassemble this while it was in the automobile doing the work, but I think the video is helpful because you can see everything clearly and you don't have to work around a bunch of structure. So if it was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, at least letting my videos play all the way through. I greatly appreciate you guys. God bless. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too.